Okay, hello, welcome to the stream today. Uh, my name is Milo, my pronouns are they, them, and get ready to be a little bit spooked. Nah, it's not that scary, really. This is Phantom Fighter on the NES. Um, it was originally made in Japan and known as Regen Doshi, which is also the name of a film that the game is based on. So, this is the 1985 uh, Hong Kong kung fu horror comedy film mr vampire um so yeah it's complicated because it's like a hong kong film it's based in china and then the japanese version of the film is called regan doshi and then they made a game based on that and it's called regan doshi and then they localized the game as phantom fighter even though the film had also been localized uh I believe that's Mr. Vampire. Pretty sure. I watched a version of it that was in the original language, but with English subtitles, and they changed all the character names. So we'll see if that carries through into the game as well. This is just the attract mode, I guess. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, this looks cool. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a film about uh, Jiang Xie, which, uh, also, forgive my Chinese pronunciation throughout this, I, I will attempt some words, but if I do badly with the pronunciation, then I apologize. Um, so yeah, the Jiangxi? Uh, no, I already said it. Yeah, well, Jiangxi is like how it's written, but then I found out that it should be pronounced a bit more like Jiangxi. So, I'm not sure. But, um, in Japanese, they're known as Kyonshi. They're the hopping vampires, uh, iconography of them can be seen in such popular culture as Dark Stalkers. There's a juncture character in that, and like uh, Chaozu in Dragon Ball, for example. So, this film is about a Taoist priest who is an expert at fighting these, and I guess he's the titular Mr. Vampire. Um, that's who we're playing as in the game. Now you will recognize Pony Canyon's name, those well-known purveyors of quality, uh, known for many Kusoga or crap games uh, under their publishing belt. But the developer is not credited on the title screen there, they're Marionette, who if you have watched all of my streams you might have seen before as the creators of Koneko Monogatari, the Famicom game that is based on the film Milo and Otis. All right, that's enough preamble. Let's start the game. Uh, normal, I guess. Yeah, we'll go with normal and see how we go. Town one, Kenshi, we've been waiting for you. Kyonchis with an E have been discovered and people are hiding in their houses. Please save us. Okay, cool. They know that this guy's the expert. He knows how to deal with them. Very cute sprites here. We, you may have noticed before when I entered, or when the demo entered the house, it cuts to a much larger sprite. Look at the animation on that. So many frames for a Famicom game. That's really impressive. I like that. All right, so we have two buttons, punch and kick. The kick is obviously gonna be more powerful, right? Oops. Castlevania style, or I guess Mega Man style health bars. Ow. So we have a rather portly hopping vampire here. We'll probably be seeing a lot of them through the game. Um, so you might be familiar with some of the imagery of the Jiangshu type monster. But um, this film is actually the, the bit of media that kind of popularized that depiction of them. Of course, it was preceded by an earlier kung fu film called Encounters of the Spooky Kind by Sammo Hung. But Sammo Hung then went on to produce this film. Oh, hi, Gibbon. How's it going? Ready to get spooked? Feel free to rest here anytime you need to recover your strength. That would be great. My health is very low. Kenshi regained his strength. 
You look well rested. It's a hard journey. Please come again whenever you need to. Goodbye for now. Take care. Okay, very wordy, but... Now go on with your journey. I will. And this is the apprentice character. There's two apprentice characters in the film. They're comic relief. Um, yeah, let's go outside. I don't think I have any items, but we'll investigate that later. Yeah, so there's sort of a town hub, and then you go in the buildings and fight the vampires. Whoop. Um... Yeah, so like, the story with the Jiangsu is very interesting. They're like an obscure bit of lore from an ancient Chinese dynasty. Like, texts. And Samu Hung basically revived them, revived the idea, or, or like, pioneered the, the modern idea of them. Um, which spurred the interest in them in popular culture. And that was in Encounters of the Spooky Kind, closely followed by this uh, film. Alright, what's our award this time? Conchies, the infamous zombie phantoms, <laughs> are back from the land of the dead, sure. They've started acting violently in our villages, and we need your help. Kenshi accepted one ancient scroll. Cool. Okay. I now have the scroll. What shall we do? Carry nothing. Sacred sword? Whoa, I have so much cool stuff. Um, I hope it's not single use. I'll try a sacred sword maybe when there's a tough fight, I guess? But how am I to know which fights are tough? I guess if you retreat to the door after you see the enemy, you can grab that item. <gasps> this one's green, it must be tougher. Let's try the sword. Whoops. Uh, use items. It, the text is so slow. Okay, sacred sword. We don't have the sacred th <laughs> Then why did you give me the option? Why did you present that? Okay, I don't know what a ton ten is. I'm gonna look that up. No, not the Tottenham Hotspurs. Oh boy, I have no idea. Getting all kinds of pictures. There's something from Naruto, that might be it. I don't know. Alright, moving on. Carry nothing. My fists are enough. Boom. I'm supposed to have a turbo button here. I just tried it and it didn't really work. Oh, I forgot to rest. The person said I could go back to rest as often as I wanted. Oh no! What a weak and miserable boss he is. <laughs> it can't be helped. I will go out on my own as an authentic martial artist to beat Kyun Chi's. Ha ha ha. It's only a joke. It won't help to be too hasty. Let's carefully evaluate the password. Okay. No save system, of course. Now boss, shall we try again or give up for now? Go! You fool! Oh yeah, the the um, character famously has a big mono brow in the film. Oops, I missed. I was only a bit careless. You're not nearly a true phantom fighter. Let's hurry up with our journey. Don't be lazy, follow me. I'd like to see the dialogue if I say no. Uh, oops, where was it? Okay, rest. Oh, rest takes you back to the title screen. Um, okay. Well, speaking of rest, I'll go and recover. Now, what do you think those are in the top right corner? Some kind of weapon? 
It looks like a Klingon bat laugh almost. So going back here to recover health. Very useful. We'll do that often, I think. And then we'll use fast forward to get through the dialogue. Cool! Alright, we're on our way. Hope I get a secret sword at some point. Um, okay. Oh, I'm scared. That animation, I love it. It's really cool. Um, okay. So yeah, I was, uh, talking about, like, the rules of Jiangsha. Many of them were made up by this movie. Some of them carry through, some of them get ignored. Like, using sticky rice to absorb the curse of the Jiangsha. That's a big feature of the film. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. There you go. Thank you. Good luck. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she wanted to go in the garage, but I let her under the stairs instead. One health. These guys really are tough, but I have nothing to deal with them. Well, that did too. Oops. Ugh. Yeah, in the film he had a lot more tools than just his fists and feet. There's this whole thing with like... Like special ink that I guess he's blessed and you soak string in it and then you stretch the string out and then you like stretch it toward and you flick it and that causes damage to evil spirits. Oops. And they use that to... you might have seen in the intro the coffin that the Jiangshu was inside was covered in this grid pattern and that, that's made with this sort of ink string method. They make a grid there that stops the vampire from escaping. I don't know why you would punch when you can kick. It does more damage and knocks him over. As far as I can tell. You can't really combo it too well. Done. Burn. Yeesh. Oh, another one. No, I'm not ready. All right, let's see if I can like leave. Go outside. Go and rest. Hopefully that one stays dead. Yeah. And in a flash. Bye -bye. Oh no, <laughs> the vampire's back too. Gotta do two in a row for this one, I guess. Unless... Oh, the door's closed. Oh, jumping kicks. I didn't think of that. Jumping punch? Less useful. So one of the Jiangshia's main methods of attack is their long fingernails. That's why the, um, the outstretched hands can hurt you. They do the outstretched hands thing anyway, I guess, but, um, yeah, stabbing you with the sharpened claws is, uh, alright. I guess the punch is good for if they've approached you up close. Oh, we did real badly there, didn't we? Okay. Let's try and no-hit this one. A perfect... <laughs> A perfect run. It can be done, I'm sure. Hang on, let's try a couple of things. So select does nothing, start just pauses. I've got those three things. I'm doing like Castlevania up and attack inputs and that's not working. That, that was good. The fast forward is too much. I gotta not do that when I'm rewinding or I'll lose 
is too much progress. <laughs> Short one's tough. Ah! I looked up a long play of this game and it was two hours. I don't know. Ah. Yeah, I don't know if I'll beat this today, but I'll try. You just gotta space it right so that it jumps right into your kick. Oops. And then doesn't hit you afterwards. Good. Because it doesn't. The hitbox of its hands is not active all the time. Saying Kyon Shi's written the way. It, wow, you can stand on their hands. That's weird. In dialogue, it was Kyon Shi's with an E. I was just reflecting on that because it's a, it's applying rules that sometimes are in effect in English to a word that it really doesn't fit for because it's from another language. Ah. I remember in Yoshi's Island, it does a similar thing. Like Yoshi, it's a Japanese word. It's it's nonsense, but it's still a loan word from another language, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't get over that. That's silly. You can stand on the arms. I wonder if that protects you from an attack. Nope. <laughs> Probably not. So like in the intro to the original Yoshi's Island, in the English version, it spells Yoshi's with an E after the I. And then they never do that again, because it's dumb. Oh god. I think this might be a Kusoga. Like many other Pony Canyon and Marionette games. Secret is probably just to do better on the first fight so you have more health on this one. I don't. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Alright, let's try a different tack. Jump and then approach and punch. Like, went after they jump. What? Come on. Are you kidding me? It's the force of their jump that gives the hands power. Deadly force. Are you kidding me? Why are my arms so short? Put your body into it, Kanji. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this film didn't just popularize Jung Shia, it also made a career for this guy. This is um uh I gotta look up his name. <laughs> So, yeah, I did it. Oh, cool. The Chinese title is translates to Hold Your Breath for a Moment, which it was released under in Taiwan. Um, whereas the regular title is Mr. Vampire. Directed by Ricky Lau. Master Cow is played by Lam Ching Ying. So... Oh, hang on, an orb. Oh, a health refill. Oh, and it put a thing on my UI up there, on the top right. So I guess that was a special boss one. And that was the reward. There's no NPC past there. Looks like all the NPCs are dead in here. Those spell tags everywhere, that's fun too. Nice background detail. Obviously from the damage on here, that should indicate. That is a danger house. Yeah, so Lam Ching Ying, he reprised the role of Master Cow in sequels to this film, 
sequels to encounters of the spooky kind uh other unrelated films he just made it his whole thing um which is good for him and it worked out very well for him it looks like playing this unibrow master of uh, occult arts in fighting supernatural creatures and it's cool it's a good character like he's he's got like legit kung fu cred he's got comedy chops it's all good um this culminated in a tv show called what's it called vampire expert i think um which he sadly passed away during the production of um but yeah, if you look up his career, you'll see him a lot in this yellow outfit. It should be yellow, it's a bit brown in this game. Um, sorry, what's this guy saying? Improve your fighting skills and character. The Kung Fu Training School will teach you new, school, new skills. Great. Um, where is it, please? <laughs> I have no more advice to give you. Cool. These skills sounds good. Do they have better range? <laughs> Potentially. Because that would be great. Alright, we'll go heal. Yep, okay. Let's move on with our journey. There's a gate here. But then more stuff. I'll just go through each one as I come to it. Okay. We're in a kind of temple, I guess. Oh. Yeah. I'll try and land a jump kick. Yeah, that felt good. Given says she likes the slightly smaller overworld sprites. Yeah, like you prefer them to the up close ones. I think I agree with that. Although, like, the stages are, are so far all very flat. So. The only interactable space is like this bottom quarter or layer of the screen. So they could stand to be a lot bigger even, well, if the Famicom could handle it, which it obviously can't. Um, but yeah, they could use the small sprites and then vary the level design to accommodate more movement and stuff. Alright, Kyonchi's living in the cave, uh, sorry, you'll find terrifying Kyonchi's living in the cave ahead. To get to where Kyonchis are living, you must collect three jades, said to have been made from tears of a dragon, and break the mysterious power which seals off the spiritual world. Is this Sekiro? <laughs> Says person who has only played Sekiro. You did me a great favor, thank you. Sorry, there's, there's similar... Uh, items and objectives in Sekiro, which I just played recently. Um, yeah, let's just keep going in the next one we find, but we will return there when we have three jade dragon tears or whatever. Yeah, I like the animation of these sprites. They're very fluid because they have a lot of frames. The Jiangxi, Jiangxia characters of like, most of their bodies are quite static, but that is in keeping with, I guess, how they're depicted. Um, Master Cow, he could stand to have a bit more movement in his body, I think. <laughs> but they've done what they could. Nice background, I like that a lot. Okay, move. Yeah. This one's slow, but tough. And it does less damage, which is good. Getting these variations. Minor variations, but still. Uh, those must be the... Yeah, those orbs must be what I'm looking for for that lady. I wonder who that lady's supposed to be. There's a female lead of the film. Um, But there's also another female character who is a ghost. Spoilers. Um, it's probably just the, the lead woman. 
This is a training school where you're taught skills, but you can't see the master for free. Do you understand? I do understand how capitalism works, yes. Let's see how much you know about Kyonchi. Oh, it's a quiz? <laughs> okay. What kind of place do Kyonchis usually live in? Wet place, New Jersey, Beverly Hill. <laughs> now I'm really curious what the original Japanese version was. I don't remember that lore from the film of them living in wet places, but that's the only one that wasn't a joke. That's good, the master is waiting for you in his room, go and see him. So payment in the form of trivia questions, I guess. But like, my character is the master, what master could I be seeing to teach me things? Welcome Kenshi, if you have an ancient scroll, I'll teach you a new move. I have three, buddy. Choose one. Two thrust, two kick, high jump, wolf move. Well, how would I know which one is good? Um, I'll make a save state there that I can return to. But I kind of want to try wolf move. High jump. Mm, that's, yeah, wolf move is one of my most curious about. I'll teach you wolf move. Training sounds, training sounds. Kenchi, you well withstood the hard training. Now how about learning one more new skill? Well, I can't afford it, but let's see what you say if I try it. I can't teach you a skill for the number of ancient scrolls you have. Come back again. Okay. Well, now we have the wolf move. What does that mean exactly? He didn't teach me how to do it. Uh, okay. These sprites are very cute. They're more like what you get in Zelda 2 or Castlevania. Whereas these ones... Much bigger. Okay, wolf move. <laughs> you can crouch, but you can't attack while crouching. Alright, I need to look up how to do this. I think I had the strategy wiki page open a while back. Yeah, here it is. Enables you to move faster than normal. That's not that useful. In fact, um, let's go back there. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Oh no. I forgot what the right button was. Isn't RetroArch just so good? It's not. Uh, I'm just using it because I was in a rush. Um, okay, so it's... You know what, I don't remember the buttons. Save state options. What? Uh, what slot am I on? There's a, uh, hold on. Ah, there you go. Okay. What? What? Uh, how do you go back? Oh my god. <sighs> Sorry about this. Alright. God damn. Alright. So Strategy Wiki recommends getting the two kick as the first thing you learn because it's a useful move. So let's do that. 
and the cool sounding wolf move just makes you walk faster. Alright. Go outside. What? Oh, it forgot my keybinds. Do I need to do some kind of... Frick. <laughs> Retroarch sucks. Okay, let's go to... Here. Alright, I have the double kick. Let's test it out. What? What? Hang on a sec. Did I actually learn it? What is the famous Chinese newspaper? <laughs> um, that one? No? <laughs> Wall poster? I don't understand. Okay, whatever. Alright, did I actually learn it? Because it it changed my keybinds, so I think I actually cancelled instead of selecting. Okay, there we go. I've learned to kick successfully this time. Alright. Now let us finally try out a new two-kick move. Whoops, uh, that one. Okay, so now a single kick input does a double kick attack. That's great, that's really good. Very pleased with this. Hello. Thank you very much, sir. In return, I will present you with an ancient scroll handed down in my family. Ancient scroll is a document of secret arts written on tiger skin. Oh, wow. Cool, that'll let me learn another thing. Well, now that I have that... Let's do the double punch, because the punch is situationally useful. Oops, cursor on screen. I will need to answer another trivia question. I do understand. As a phantom fighter, you must be well learned to test your knowledge. Who created Ultima? <laughs> Is this cross promotion? Who published this in the US? I have that information here. Fuji Suncare Communications International. Publishers of Ultima. <laughs> okay, well, it's Lord British, but I enjoy the other one, the other answers too. That's funny. Um, I wonder if anyone can read that in the background. Okay. Give me the double punch. Yes, do it. And then I'll come back for faster walking. Might help with spacing a little bit. No. Bye. All right. Oh no, I did this one. Wait, Kyonchis are here. So I hadn't tried this before, but pressing A in front of a building tells you something about it, I guess. A training hall. Is nothing happening? Conchies are here. I'll have to fight them again if I go through there again, which I will. So, is nothing happening is a poor translation, I think, of, like, this is empty, no, there's nothing here, so that sort of thing. So that's temple. So maybe it's random when they respawn, or that they move around or something. Alright. Dangers in the air, probably indicating a boss creature that I will receive a dragon's tear from, right? Yeah. And double punch. Oh yeah, look at that. 
That's great. Very cool. Oops. Cannot be complacent, even with my new super moves. You don't want to get knocked down, do you? Gotta break your poise. Fortunately, there's no parry move in this game. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh, the short one again. No. <laughs> My nemesis. Ugh. Maybe I should try running through. So you do that and then, yeah, you go under the jump. Nah. Just hoping to knock him down. That didn't happen. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? Yes. We did it. Get orb. Alright, so I'll return to the bamboo grove next, but first I'll see what else is around. For example, there's another two entrances and a cave. Enter with courage. Kyonchis are here. Kyonchis are here. So that's probably another two scrolls. Um, we did get the health refill, so let's do it. Clear out the town, then go to the bamboo grove, and then go in the cave, I guess. I'm not sure what the lady in the grove is going to give me. <clears throat> oh. No. I love the double kick. Very cool. This talisman is loaded with spiritual power. You can stop Kyonchi's using this. Kenji accepted the talisman. Great. That's one of our usable items that the apprentice tells you about. Um, well, I will consult Strategy Wiki because the game is a little bit uh, lacking in detail. Um, Oh, you can look at the quiz question and answers here. I won't do that. I'll keep it uh, honest. Mm, looks like I've already seen most of the enemy types. I don't know if it's going to tell me... Maybe on the main screen? Well, never mind. It does say I have infinite continues, which is nice. Um, okay, so that wasn't a scroll. But it was something. Maybe I'll use the talisman on the boss. Oh. The boss of this area. I've learned from Strategy Wiki also the structure of the game. So this is town one, and there are eight towns in total, and we've already been going for almost 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to finish this one. My goal is to see the ghost. The ghost lady is like a secondary antagonist in the film. And according to Strategy Wiki, she's in here somewhere. I'm not sure where. But that would be nice. You know the ghost lady in Sekiro? She's just like that. <laughs> I'm keen to display my ignorance by referring to Sekiro as many times as I need to. Okay. It was interesting there. I was reflecting when watching the film. Um, hang on, let's do this first. Thank you very much. In return, I will present you a mysterious mirror called a Tonten. So that's what a Tonten is. It's a mirror. From ancient days, this tonten has been valued by travelers as a mirror to save them from evil spirits. Nice. Thanks, lady. Or whoever you are. Cool. Now, I wouldn't dare go in that cave without first preparing. 
by returning to the bamboo grove, but even before that, I think, we must rest. Hooray! Okay. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh my gosh. No! No! Yeah, okay, so oh, I'm nearly done here. Hold on. I'll tell you my little anecdote later. Here we are. You'll find terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three jades. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so for coming here with the three things, she gives me a scroll. Yes, unless it might be farmable for scrolls. Hmm. I'll try that once. But yeah, she does tell you to go to the cave with the tears. The jades. Eh. No. It is farmable, so I could learn all of the things. Ah, uh, I have to do it. <laughs> I feel that I have to do it. It's a pretty easy fight, and then I'll have maxed out my skills. It's probably new skills in each new town. Not that I'm using jumps much. I'm trying it now. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you think he's kicking twice? He is. He plays the sound twice, but the kick animation is like slower than the sound. So is jumping really a good counter to a hopping vampire? I'm gonna say no. Nope. Okay. One more. It does say town one on the upper left. It doesn't tell you that there's eight, but eight is a... It's like a Famicom trope. Eight worlds, right? No. Gibbon says the hoppers need better hurt boxes. Agreed. They also need more variety in their actions. <laughs> All they do is hop. Oh, and Volgloss is here. Hi, Volgloss. How you doing? Saying, that's what I call a core gameplay loop. <laughs> yeah. This game is very well made. Okay. So we need to go back to the dojo. The training hall. We'll learn those last two moves, but first, we must answer a trivia question, and I'm sure that Volgloss can help me with his um, deep understanding of Chinese culture. Okay. What country do samurais come from? <laughs> oh, what a brain teaser. Having played Sekiro recently, I know very well that the answer is Japan. Okay, give me your knowledge. I was gonna say sensei, I don't know the Chinese equivalent of that. Let's call it, let's go with seafood, just to mix things up with different cultures, ha ha ha. 
Yes, one more, please. Wolf move. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Indeed, Volklas says this. Funny enough, my deep understanding of Chinese culture was somehow not helpful there. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I apologize. Hopefully we get more Chinese questions later. Nice cave backdrop. Whoa, hello. Now, I wanted to use a talisman here, didn't I? Boss, what shall we do? Talisman, please. Kenshi has taken the talisman. Okay. So now punch is replaced by holding up the talisman. This is a special kind of, this is the spell tag that I referred to earlier. If you put it on the face of a Jiangshu, they will be paralyzed as long as the spell remains in place. Bit tricky to pull off and not that helpful, so maybe we won't bother. <laughs> Clockloss says, uh oh, it's just Belmont. Yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of Castlevania folks have this. Uh like shadow thing. I think Alucard was probably the first to do it, and then Just did it because he's just a clone of Alucard. And then Soma did it because, um, well, he's really Dracula. Spoiler alert! He's not, but it's complicated. Well, that wasn't too hard. Oh, here's one more. No! Yes. Done. Whoa! A more elaborate death animation. Very cool. He did it. That's my boss. Let's keep up that pace and beat them one by one. Alright. Please copy the password carefully. I will do. And then hurry along on your journey. Password. There it is. I'm, I'm writing it down right now. Yep, I've written it down. I didn't actually. I used the notes section of my manual. I didn't even check if the, there was a manual scan of this. Didn't have time. You must be the authentic phantom fighter we've been talking about. Everything in the village is topsy-turvy. Please save us. Will do. Person with strange hat. Shouldn't say strange. It's probably a very common cultural Chinese hat. Now they said the mirror was good against evil spirits. Do the Jiangshu account of spirits or am I saving that for the ghost? And do my items get used up? Unclear. <laughs> Old Gloss is wondering which NES or Famicom game had the most absurd password. Yeah, I haven't seen the password entry screen, but it does involve playing card suits. Among other characters. Metroid's passwords are very long, but that was only in the localized version, obviously. The original and the Famicom disk system could save. Oh. Oh. No! <laughs> the incompetence on display. This really doesn't give a good impression of the martial arts antics of the film, I gotta say. And this might be a good time to slip into that anecdote I was mentioning earlier. Because it's so fun and kinetic, the the fighting in it, like, and there's so much inherent comedy in the fighting too. Um, I haven't seen much of uh, Hong Kong Kung Fu movies, but oh, <laughs> I was thinking about this, like, Jackie Chan really brought that kind of energy to the mainstream Western film world. So if you've seen a Jackie Chan film, you might have some idea, at least this is what I thought to myself when I was watching, I was like, this reminds me of Jackie Chan films I've seen as a kid. Um, Cause it's like a blend of slapstick and like good martial arts fundamentals and prop comedy and stuff. 
it's really fun, just fun to watch. It's a really good time, so I would recommend watching Mr. Vampire. Kenchi, the sacred sword has been forgot, uh, forged for 366 days in burning flame and purified by the light of a full moon. That sounds like a lot of work. It has powerful spiritual strength. Please accept it. Great, I got the sword. Now again, I'm not sure if they're single use. But I'll just try it on the next thing and then we can find out. Um, actually, this is bad. I didn't find the place to rest to recover my health. <laughs> Should have gone there first, huh? Uh, um, it's okay, I can do something perfectly. Training hall. Kill and cheese. Kill and cheese. This looks like the prison. A lot of the film is set there. Is this a temple? Yes, this is a temple. Ooh! Ghost? Okay. Oh, we do have a fight here. That sucks. Um, Gibbon saying... Yeah, she's remarking on this game. It's a very detailed game with really robust sprite animations. Agreed. But the ge actual gameplay is a bit... Hmm, yeah. That is totally fair. And you're not even the one playing it. The gameplay is indeed a bit rough. <laughs> Sword! And it gives me more reach, that's nice. But for something that was talked up so much about its spiritual power, it doesn't seem to do that much damage. Ugh. At least it'll let me safely do some... <laughs> you're kidding me, it's the giant's knife! It friggin' broke after four hits! What a ripoff! <laughs> I think Volgloss might be right. He was saying, This sword has been forged in volcanic lava for 758 days. It is now a puddle of slag. Yeah, I think they did it too long. They cooked it too long. Is it a boy cast? Give me a paddle pop stick. Said it was a sacred sword. Crap. Oh, you, you probably don't have paddle pops, do you? Um... Icy poles? What do you call them? <laughs> you know when you have an ice, an iced confection on a stick? Yeah, what do you call that stick? Paddle Pop is like a brand name here, but it has become a term that applies to all sticks of that nature. Okay. No! Popsicle stick. Yeah, that's what I was reaching for. But we don't call them that, obviously, so... Couldn't think of it. Done. Get owned. But, uh, you didn't do much to help. You could have sat up. Done me a solid. Feel free to rest here. Thank you very much. How'd you go? Did you get an x-ray? You were supposed to get an x-ray. Hmm. The next step is to go to GP and get a bone Oh, okay. If you don't want to do anything that's kind of cool, get that done. Fair enough. My sword quietly disappears from my inventory. The apprentice is just like, oh, I'll take that. Alright, um, so there's another training hall here. Why don't we check that and see what they're going to offer to teach us. Was it this one? No. Cool. This is a training school. Blah 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 blah. Okay, Volgloss, let's get that Chinese knowledge in here. Here we go. What is the teaching taught by Confucius called? Psychiatry, physiognomy, or Confucianism. I wonder if the name includes the name of the guy that it is named after. I believe it is. Well, so far these haven't been so difficult, except for the one about the Chinese newspaper. Volkloss is laughing too hard to help. <laughs> I don't remember the one about the newspaper, so I'm going to look it up on strategy wiki and I'll relate it to you. I'll relay it to you. Oh, they all pull from a, a big list. Alright, I found it. 
What is the famous Chinese new pa- newspaper? School paper, wall poster, or daily China? It's just so vaguely worded that I have no idea what they were talking about. Alright, um, I don't have a scroll, but I'll say yes anyway. Three thrust, turn kick, wind jump, tiger move, mirage move. And they cost so much. Gonna need a lot of grinding if I want these. But again, I will turn to strategy wiki to find out what these actually do. I I should have saved my scrolls instead of wasting them on the last town. Okay, three thrust, pretty obvious, three punches in a row. Turn kick. This move returns you to a single kick, but this kick does much more damage than a regular kick. And it shortens fights significantly. Learn this move early. You'll be relying on it throughout much of the game. Wind jump, jump even higher. Tiger move, move even faster. Mirage move allows you to squat almost immediately, instead of needing to come to a full stop first. Squat. I should be using squat more to avoid the Jiangshi hopping. That would be smart. Alright, so I guess we'll try and get the turn kick before we leave here. Uh, but the others seem kind of optional, I would say. Shouldn't have wasted my scrolls! Alright, six is our goal. Although that does bring to mind the question, what are, what are the training halls going to teach you in the next six stages after this? Um, Alright, let's go to the graveyard first and see what it says about that mysterious spirit orb. Kyonshis are here. Let's enter and find out. Relying merely on my double kick for now, but hoping to get the turn kick at some point. Oop. I imagine that if you put in the time to learn more skills, you could become pretty powerful. But I don't know if I'll be doing that. Excuse me? There's nothing here. Okay, whatever. And the orb disappeared. Kyonchi is not here. Remove the seal enter. <laughs> what? Okay, so we're gonna have to find the NPC that tells us what to do here. Is this a maze? It is, isn't it? Oh. No. You can't go through this open doorway, apparently. Hmm. You have to stop moving before you crouch. Okay. Hello. You are traveling alone. Isn't it hard? Um... What? Okay, whatever. Looks like my orbs have disappeared again, so probably the goal is again to get three orbs. So we're gonna have a lot of repetition in this game, I guess. Oh, a new t- kind of thing. Hi, are you a friend? Let's get behind. What? Um. It has a health bar. Come to think of it, that person asked about me being alone and my apprentice has disappeared. Did I see when that happened? <laughs> I was assuming it was the main apprentice, but it might be the secondary apprentice, in which case he may have been seduced by the ghost lady. Which is an event that happens in the film. Alright, I'm just gonna... Go back, so I did that one. And I've been to the training hall, so yeah, let's just do them in order. Hi Captain, how are you doing? I am a... Vampire Hunter of Republican Era China is what I read on Wikipedia. I honestly don't know enough about Chinese history to tell you when that is, unfortunately. 
But let me show you a cool feature of this game. You can stand on the arms of a Jiangxi, Jiangxia. Like so! Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's cool. Alright. No, I'm not playing as the jumping vampire. Um, let's go heal. Do, do, do. There's a lot of walking and talking to get to a heal, so I fast forward through it. Yeah. So the film is called Mr. Vampire, and that refers to me, the expert on containing vampires and fighting them, I assume. Otherwise it's just like the guy who becomes a vampire in the film. But that happens to multiple people, so... There's kind of one central vampire antagonist. in the training dojos there's no way to increase my health I would love to just mash through battles yeah you just gotta memorize the vulnerability windows okay it's dangerous to walk around alone. Hang on a second, that sounds familiar. Is nobody gonna do anything for me unless I have my apprentice back? Yeah, this is on the Famicom. What I'm playing now is actually a NES game because this was localized for release in America. Alright, I'm gonna go to Strategy Wiki. Oh, okay. So what you need to do is, while on the world map, let the flame orb touch you, and that is what triggers the apprentice to disappear. Then you go back to that area, and the ghost will be there. So yeah, let's do that. So it is indeed following events of the film somewhat, <laughs> which is nice to see in a licensed game. Oh, this is going poorly. <laughs> yeah, I got the sword before Captain, and then it broke in three hits, so I, I said at the time that it's the giant's knife. Um. Oh, here we go. Whoa, she's fast. So this is the evil ghost spirit lady who seduces the second apprentice. Whoa, her head turned all evil. Okay. Did that happen in the film? The head coming off? I don't think so. The jump kick coming in clutch. Yeah. Captain's asking, do all vampires have to jump? Are all vampires required to jump, or is it just something that they want to do for fun? Well, um, the particular kind of vampire this is, the Zhongxie, is known for jumping, or hopping. Um, and I was reading a little bit about the history of that. Apparently, the name is from a particular province or area of China called Shangqi. I don't, I'm sorry about the pronunciation. Uh, and they would carry the dead on bamboo stretches and as they walked the bamboo would flex and so the body would appear to be bouncing up and down and this 
I guess, gave rise to myths of, like, bouncing being a habit of, uh, like, undead spirits. All right, I was supposed to use the mirror. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the one time I actually wanted to use it. <laughs> I guess he's the pack mule carrying my goods. Uh, eating his Timios. Ah. Uh. This is a fun fight. See, this is what I wanted. More enemies that have different kinds of attack patterns that require you to behave differently. <laughs> but it's really just the juncture all the way through and this one ghost, I guess. From what I've seen on Strategy Wiki. So I've had two people comment to me that I was alone. So presumably they will have different things to say and do when my apprentice returns. Come back here. No. Oh, that still had a hurt box. Or hit box, whatever. We done? Burn. That's not what happens in the film. Spoiler alert. The apprentice is like in love with her and decides to let her go free after they have defeated her in battle. Here is a bell, let's take it. Can she obtain the bell? An act of mercy for this tormented spirit. Truly sorry for being such a bother. You should be, buddy. He didn't tell me what the bell does, by the way. Back to strategy wiki. Okay. So the bell lets me interact with that small uh, Jiangxi character that I saw earlier, who is known as Konshi, which is a play on Kyonshi, but with Ko, like S in baby or child. So it's like a baby Jiangxi. When I was looking up some images for the cover art, which you can see on the left, that's the Famicom cover art, nice cartoony style. The one on the right is the American release cover, which looks kind of cool too. Got the high kick in, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I was looking at images of VHS covers of movies mostly, and a couple of um, instances of the Famicom box art. And uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot of sequels to the movie because it was so popular. And I think there's a child Jiangxia character in at least one of the sequels. So this must be them incorporating elements from sequel movies into the game, which is a fun thing as well. So with the bell, I'll be able to control Konshi. Nope, wrong house. I have no more advice to give you. Great. See ya. I will just have to find that other house again. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Oh, I'll need to, I guess, use the bell. Bell. Kenji has taken the bell. Okay. Bell. So now it's doing my bidding. Haha. -ha. This was the original conception of uh, Jiangxia characters in the film Encounters of the Spooky Kind. Was they would be controlled by an evil wizard. And this you sort of see this in uh, Mr. Vampire as well. At the start there's not an evil wizard but like a, another Taoist monk expert character who is controlling a group of of them, and he calls them his clients. I can't use the bell again. Whatever. Oh no, here we go. It's following me, hooray. 
and now it fights for you whenever you next enter a combat zone. It's very slow. <laughs> yeah. And it's very weak as well. What's the benefit of this exactly? <laughs> Maybe we need it to fight the boss or something. I hope the bell doesn't break after one use. Done. Oh. Getting the wombo combos in. No. Wow. Oh. And they float off into the air. Since I haven't seen the sequels, boss, Conchi has disappeared. What should we do? I'm gonna do a quick search for. I'm sure that rendering Conchi is not accurate to the original. Yeah, so there's like a 1992 installment, the fifth one, but the only other one by Ricky Lau, directed by Ricky Lau. Um, let me have a look at the posters. Oh, they're so cartoony. I don't know what's going on here. Are these even in the same series? I don't know. See if I can find out more later. For now, let us continue our quest. Actually, speaking of finding out more later. Oh, no! <laughs> no, not again! No! Uh, refuge in the cave. Not possible. Alright, it despawned. Didn't know the apprentice could be abducted another time. Oh, this is the temple. Dangers in the air. Sounds promising. Still haven't, like, learned the objective of this town. I've had some events happen. Conchi has to be involved, surely. Otherwise, why are they there? to go through the apprentice arc to get the bell. Come on. Oh wait, the bell's gone! It did break after one use. Useless. Cheaply made bells. Oh. Got greedy. As a seasoned Sekiro player, I should know not to get greedy on my hits. Duck! <laughs> Blundered right into the hitbox. So this one's so slow, it's pretty easy. To not get hit if you're not being greedy. Also, I haven't got any ancient scrolls. Yet. Yee! Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Am I... Invincible if I duck. Because of the height of this juncture's arms. Hmm. Not if it doesn't move. Captain asks if that other vampire is pink so you know their gender. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So we're getting orbs again. And the... the <laughs> The big one reminds him of a kangaroo. But Captain, no tail. Okay. I'll tell you what Strategy Wiki says about the, vo the varieties of uh, the enemies. Do, 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 do. Oh. Oh, Lordy, coming. 
here come that boy. It's green, so this one's the frog. The big one was the kangaroo. What are some other cool hopping animals? I don't know, rabbits. We can get nicknames for all of them. The short blue one can be... I don't know. A bilby. Oh wait, do bilbies hop? I'm even thinking of the, the pygmy kangaroo mouse or whatever it's called. So here's the red kangaroo. No! Bilbies are so cute. I don't know if they pop though. I actually saw one in real life once. I was at Huskisson, which is a little town on Jervis Bay in the central coast of New South Wales. And it was like there in a park. I counted myself very lucky because I would have expected Bilbies like in the bush, out in the wilds, not in a town. She's a here. All right, let me tell you what strategy wiki says about the different types. So the basic type, Zanshi, and the pink one with the ponytail, Sosekushi, the two most common types. Average height, strength, and jump capability. There is little difference other than appearance. It is unclear if Sosekushi are simply female variants of Zanshi, but their pink color and ponytail suggest that they might be. Thank you, Strategy Wiki Editor. If it becomes relevant, I will tell you what they say about other types. Bilby's kind of hot. Hmm, okay. Duh. I know at least one chocolate company does chocolate Bilby's here instead of chocolate bunnies for Easter. So if these ones have similar characteristics to the green ones, they can both be frogs. There's pink frogs, I'm sure. There's red frogs. They're delicious. That was a joke about jelly lollies. <laughs> yeah, mash the red. In the graveyard, the spirit of a lonely young girl has been known to capture a young man. Last time I went to the graveyard, I was so shocked that I dropped the bell. Four scrolls at once! Good lord. Thank you, buddy. And that sets up the little graveyard arc that we blundered into. Folkloss um, says he's reading about the items and apparently what breaks them is not using them, but getting hit while you have one out. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Um, Captain says, Bilby's move kind of like how a kangaroo moves when he uses all four of its limbs to kind of crawl on the ground. I know what you mean with that kind of... That gait. Um... They put their arms forward and then scoot both their back legs to catch up. Yes, I've done it myself on occasion. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Oh, Captain has had a chocolate bilby every Easter since dating his now wife. That's lovely. And aren't they adorable? I don't suppose you've got chocolate bilbies in New Zealand. New Zealand is interesting because of its native wildlife. It doesn't have much in that um, sort of small mammal slot. Uh, so there's introduced animals that take up that ecological niche. So hedgehogs are, like, prevalent in 
Aotearoa. It has long been said that somewhere in this village there is a bell that can control Conchi the baby phantom. Okay, that's also something that I discovered. You could have told me that without the apprentice being there, but whatever. But hey, we got a bunch of scrolls. Lovely stuff. We can go learn that super kick move. And then we'll be well set up to grab the last orb, although I feel like I've been everywhere now, so I don't know where the orb is. Uh, but I can look that up. Okay, which one was the dojo? Do, 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 do. This one. Nah, no chocolate bilbies in New Zealand, unfortunately, but they have chocolate kiwis. Interesting. Let's see how much you know about Kyonshi. Now, I've had this one already, but just to just to check with the viewers that I wasn't I wasn't second guessing the right answer. It's wet place. There's a scene in the movie where the like main Jiangshu character escapes, goes to a cave to recover, and then meets a gorilla there, or a man in a gorilla suit, and they have a fight. It's very silly. Oh, I guess no. Well, they're they're hunting for the vampire, and they go in the cave like the villagers, and then they find a, a gorilla man. Alright, um, turn kick. Full gloss confirms that New Jersey is more right than this game knows. Oh, what do you know? That we don't... about vampires in New Jersey. So that's all the move that I wanted to know. I need to find the last orb. I've just, I feel like I've been everywhere. But this tells you, like, danger is near, right? That's what it tells you when there's a boss there. And that's where the orbs are, I, I think, maybe. <clears throat> Danger's in the air. Alright, we might not have been in this one. Yeah, yeah, Beverly Hill is not Beverly Hills, it's just one hill. Okay, so the super kick, it comes out fast, and it does more damage. I feel like it doesn't reach quite as high, but... Hey. Big damage is a big thumbs up from me. Oh, a tall one, okay. Strategy wiki, what do you say about the tall ones? Okay, it's got a paragraph. The Wi Kyonshi and Ryu Kyoshi. What? Is that a typo? I don't know. Quite the opposite of one another. We Kyonshi and Ryu Kyoshi are found less frequently than other Kyonshi. Uh, the We Kyonshi are the shortest Kyonshi, while the Ryu Kyoshi are the tallest. Since We Kyonshi are so short, these are the blue ones. They are impossible to duck under. They can also leap quite far like frogs. On the other hand, Ryu Kyoshi are so tall that it's easy to avoid their attacks simply by ducking. Ryu Kyoshi tend not to leap far, but they can leap very high. Okay. And the more heavy set ones are called Kimenshi. Slower. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say much about them. Terrible jumping abilities. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> it's the Luigi version of the frog. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess it is. This is actually kind of tough. Maybe not. <laughs> no problem. Just as we suspected, we've got the third dragon orb, which means we can move on. Maybe I'll try the mirror in the next boss fight now that I have the assistant back. Okay. 
Yeah, sometimes I get lucky. Alright, give me the mirror. Mirror! It broke in one use. And the enemy wasn't even on the screen. Let's try it again. This one throws knives. It knocked it down. Uh, not much else. Oh, I forgot to heal. Um, oh no, I didn't. The knives just do tons of damage. Uh, okay. <laughs> Volkos was expecting the tall one to be two Kyonchi stacked together in a trench coat. Interesting. Wow, those those are really damaging. Um, hmm. I guess extra jumping ability would let me jump over them. But also, if I'm close enough, I could probably duck under them as well. Ugh! Captain's asking if... Are there any Australian games that portray things like yaoi's? That's a great question. I would say there's not many games that depict like native Australian folklore like that that I that I know of. I wonder if there's any kind of yaoi or bunyip kind of character in Thai the Tasmanian Tiger because that's like, there's a lot of mascot platformers that star Australian animals, strangely enough. Like Crash Bandicoot, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, Wally, Willy Wombat, etc. But one of the few that's actually made by an Australian- and Cow the Kangaroo. One of the few that's actually made by an Australian company is Chrome Studios' Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. So I wonder about that. I've never played any of them. It's like four games or something. Turn kick is so good. The running crouch might be useful, but I don't want to spend the time to go get it, so... I can make a new save slot, though. That's my boss beating down such a horrible creature. Oh, I can see how happy the villagers are. Nice. Please copy the password carefully. Captain thinks the junk shell is teabagging me. Dancing on my corpse, pretty sure that was a Fortnite dance. Okay, well, I saw the ghost. Been going for an hour and a half. We're at town three of eight. Maybe we can make our goal to clear this town and then finish for today. We're glad you came, Kenshi. We have heard about you and all the villagers have been waiting for you to come. So I feel like we've almost seen all the features of the game. We controlled the baby Kanshi. We got the sword that broke easily. We used the other items. I guess the only novelty left, you know, since Strategy Wiki seems to have suggested that we've seen all the enemy types so far, uh, is to see what new skills might be in the dojos. But our first goal should always be finding the temple so we can rest between bouts. So here it is. This is a temple. It doesn't say there's Kyonshi here. So I guess we're fine. Nope, there is. Oh, it's a new one. Okay. So this is similar to the other large one, but just has a slightly different sprite and slightly different behavior. It's under the same heading on Strategy Wiki. And it's pretty easy to. Oops. But I think you permanently unlock a temple when you fight the Joshua there. Okay, cool. Captain said, I feel like that could be a fun genre to play. You mean the Australian animal mascot platformer? Yeah, there's plenty of them. Doing an all the Australian 3D animal platformers. That could be interesting. Even just making the list, I think, would be fun. Maybe I'll do that later. Uh, which is not me committing to playing them. Um, 
You gotta include the um, Taz, the Tasmanian Devil Looney Tunes games as well. Even though he is nothing like an actual Tasmanian Devil in shape or behavior. Um, okay, uh, this building looks different. What is it? Oh, by the way, you press up to jump, so I was pressing up to like enter the door. But it didn't do anything when you're in this interior theme. Oh, Captain meant indigenous Australian folklore. He says, I feel like those games should exist. Well, there's the problem that you run into. That would be a really fun genre and would make for great, uh, you know, video game stuff. Like, uh, ideas and premises and settings. But yeah, the problem is that there really isn't much that exists in that space. I did a bit of a deep dive into that a few years back and the results were in a stream that had a lot of technical problems because I was doing some weird hack solution to capture my iPad for the most part um, which broke down a few times but yeah the 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 upshot of it all is that there's not much out there in that space unfortunately you did me a great favor, thank you. Which is a kind of generic message you get after saving a townsperson, but there weren't any enemies in this house, so it doesn't really make sense. Okay, whatever. Um, alright. Let's find the dojo. So those quiz questions are one of the highlights of this game. Yep, this is it. Dangers in the air. So we have a cave in the middle of town this time. Lots of zones to enter that look similar to ones we've been in already. Wait, what? Remove the seal, enter. Okay, so instead of a cave, we're going into a ruined building at the end this time. Once we get the three mystical orbs. This is a training school. Blah, 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 blah. You must know all about the martial arts, test your knowledge. So it sort of gives you a clue of what topic it's going to be before you get to it. What is the skill called when you hold your opponent's arms from the back and throw him backward? Dragon suplex, front suplex, or side suplex? Well, if you're behind them, it's unlikely to be a front or side suplex, is it now? So I guess dragon suplex? Correct. Okay. Welcome. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, it's still six. And if they're dropping them in chunks of four again, then it's probably feasible. Oh, wait. I've seen all these before. We already know all of these. Oh, we already know what all of these do. Um, because they were all available in town too, and I looked them up. So after I've learned them, more will unlock, I believe. Yeah. So after getting Tiger Move, you've got Dragon Move, which costs 18 scrolls, uh, which enables you to move the fastest possible. And then Mirage Walk uh, is an upgrade of Mirage Move, allows you to crawl forward while squatting. Yeah, 18, gosh. But each scroll location here gives you 6 per visit. So that helps. That increases each time. Since I'm not going to play through the whole game, I'm going to look up what other techniques come on later in the game. So in town 4, oh my gosh, you get nine, you get uh, 12 scrolls per uh, site. And techniques cost 50. The techniques available are Wind Kick, a spinning kick in the air. And Mirage Thrust, which allows you to punch while squatting. Which sounds quite useful. In Town 5... 
There is no training hall. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, there's none. Town six. There's one new technique that costs 80, but you can't earn any scrolls in our town, so you have to have saved up in the previous one. Jump kick. Press A while running. You fly forward with your feet ahead of you, performing a deadly kick. There is a jump kick in the film. That happens once. You can get hurt using this attack if it ends before you clear a Kyokonshi, so it's best to use it late. So it's like the Pokemon move jump kick, where you actually get hurt if you miss. Okay. Town 7, one new technique, costs 90 scrolls. But many buildings give you 28, and some give you 35. Four thrust. A pair of punches, one high and one low, twice in rapid succession. Gives your punches the same power as the sidekick, but at a closer range. Town 8. No training. It also has a unique boss in the final... ...town. But I fear that we shall not encounter it. Alright, where am I? Town 3. Maybe we can try and clear Town 3 today. Alright, um, I don't have enough for any of these. Apologies for the interlude. Okay. Um, are any of these really worth learning? The crouch walk, maybe? I don't know, I feel like my kick is just the ultimate attack. Maybe the lady in that house would have given me a talisman if I didn't have one already. Or if I'd used it, for example. Oh, it feels so good to do so much damage. Yeah, I am the true master of martial arts. Three rooms! Unprecedented. And this one that we fought as a boss. Whoa, it's really damaging has a ton of health, but it's very slow. Oh. No! Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take that. This sword has been through many battles. Kenshi, please clear away the evil power left in it. Huh? Okay. Um, sure. Sword, not that useful. Okay. Um... So I've done that, I've done that. Frog! Ow. Ow. Red frogs are always better than green frogs. Whenever I ate orange lollies, I would get this, like, weird feeling on my tongue. Maybe that was my food intolerance. Which has become much worse in recent years. This is a nightmare. We have no choice but to depend on you. Can she accept it? Six Ancient Scroll! Getting six ancient scrolls. It doesn't seem that good when I've learned that you get 35 a pop later in the game. Oh well. Okay, so 
So, I'm beginning to understand the loop of this game. You go in a house or in a location, you fight some Jiangshia, and at the end, someone will give you an item, some scrolls, or if you're lucky, you get the dragon orb. Jeez Louise. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. Time flies like an arrow, but fruit flies like a banana. <laughs> Some classic Marx Brothers humor for you then. Alright. Let's find those orbs. Danger's in the air. That's just what I'm after. Danger is my middle name. <laughs> Call that one the grasshopper. Lanky and green. Long legs. Is nothing happening. Danger. Ow. Actually. Hmm. Maybe we can speed run the rest of the game. We're not going to get much more powerful than this. We know how to get dragon orbs. I don't need to do unnecessary battles for items that aren't going to be used much. I can rewind if I get hit. <laughs> Everything's coming up Millhouse. Oh, Milo is not sure for Millhouse, by the way, in case you're wondering. It's actually short for, short for Miroslav. It's a long story. Really? They're just gonna keep throwing more in a, a row at you the further you go, aren't they? get more skills I can save up in the the richest part of town and then blow them all at once since the moves seem to carry over between towns right danger Scum on basic enemies that do one point of damage. What am I doing? Okay. But yeah, this all started when I was playing uh, GB Genjin Land, Viva Chicken Okoku. And there was like a Chinese themed platforming area. And I was like, I bet your junk should show up here. So it felt similar to Super Mario Land's Tri Kingdom. And then it turned out they didn't. 
But hey, we found ourselves a game full of them to make up for it. And I also watched the excellent film Mr. Vampire, which I recommend. Should check out the sequels at some point. Alright, enter with courage and save states. The big boy. Okay, this is just phase one, I guess. Yep. Who's next? Another one. Not any stronger from the look of it. Whoops. Ooh. I can jump even better than a hopping vampire. Ooh, different music. Whoa, the screen flash. Terrible. Oh, I apologize. Oh, this one's real tough. Oh, that did more damage. No! Okay. Some hits just do more damage, I don't know. Great, just great. You really are strong, aren't you, boss? Don't you forget it. Okay, so what was my last chance to get scrolls? So you get scrolls in town 5 before going to town 6. But I can just take town 4. Simple as you like. Kenshi, we are so glad you came to our village. Please hurry up, defeat the Kyonchis, and bring back the night so we can sleep safely. Also, in the film, it's pretty much just in one town. They don't go to other towns. Except when the second apprentice needs to get more rice. I think he goes to a different town for that. Um, danger. Danger? I hardly know her. Wow. Don't. No. Oh, that was awful. Ugh. I can jump so high. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm getting lazy on the fundamentals here. So I forgot the first rule is find the temple before you do anything else. It's alright. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. Temple! Actually, maybe we don't need the temple, because if the only places we're going to are ones with a dragon orb, they refill your health anyway when you pick them up. So if we're not grinding for scrolls or items or anything else in a town, then I don't need to get the temple. I just have to play well enough that I get the dragon orb the first time. So there's one down. Danger. It's the grasshopper. <laughs> so funny. Um, okay. 
Wow. Oh, a one phaser. Easy peasy. Should have put a space and maybe even another word in that sentence. I'm gonna do a quick check of Strategy Wiki to see if there's any like unique rewards in this town that I should watch out for. Yeah, it's just talking about the training hall and stuff. Okay. It does say there's a unique boss in this stage, so that's cool. Who knew there were so many types of juncture? Nope. Take that, green frog. You again. Hmm? I mean, going under this one is a pretty good strategy, maybe. See, this is how quickly you can clear a town if you really beeline it. <laughs> So next town we might do some scroll grinding, but for now we can just get the heck out of dodge. Let's go. So who's coming up next? Green frog. Whoa. Faster than normal, maybe. That's one thing strategy would be sad, is that normal enemies start hitting harder. Oh, ah. Oh, really? <laughs> no! I'm being callous. Really? Alright. Let's take a mulligan on that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. That was a flawless victory. Mm, those trades were acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Different. Whoa, what the? What are you? <laughs> This is completely new. What the heck? Oh my gosh. Oops, went too far back. Oh my gosh. One damage! Oh, it still hits me. Mm. Oh, can I stun lock? Maybe. Okay, turns out it was a pushover. <laughs> Just keep up the pressure. I should have learned that from Sekiro. You have beaten half of them at least. At last, haven't you? Seems like there are many other strong ones left. Let's give it everything you've got. Fight! Fight! Will do. Apprentice. Alright, so turn 5 is our grinding zone. Um... Hang on. Where... 
Skull Scrolls per visit. Actually, maybe not. I think we can wait even longer to do our grinding. Because Town 6 has no scroll locations, but Town 7 has a training hall and you can get 35 at a pop. So yeah, we'll just wait till Town 7. <sighs> okay, everyone in our village has been waiting with bated breath for Kenshi to arrive. Please hurry. Okay, will do. Ordinary monsters do not concern me. Wow, this place is full of them. Oh, not a ghost again. Dangers in the air. I wonder if that means there's another bell here. I'm sure I'm missing out on some more dialogue by not doing anything in the last few towns, but there's no, like, unique events that are described by a strategy wiki that I can tell. Nothing like the the baby conchi and the bell and all that stuff. not a very mobile character. The crouch walking might help with that, but like the fighting system is, you know, quite static. It's about careful positioning more than anything else. Oh, this is a new one. At least two hits to knock him down. Three. Oh, what? Sometimes you just knock him down anyway? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Give me orb. No orb? That felt like a boss. They're stacking him up four in a row now. Oh my gosh. Alright, at least these ones aren't too. Not too difficult to deal with if you don't get hit. Same with all the bosses, right? That's how you beat Sekiro, you just don't get hit. Except you do, because you have to parry. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Alright. Alright. I get it. Go underneath. Maybe I should have learned that crawl move after all. Is it just random chance whether you knock them down with a kick? I don't know. I hope nobody's chatting and not getting through. People are just quiet, which is fine. Sometimes there's problems with Twitch chat where it doesn't update. And I worry about that sometimes. Ow! You hit me. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Cap. Easy peasy. One phase. Danger? I laugh in the face of danger. Ha 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 ha. What? Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Another one. Nah.
another one. No. This is the gauntlet house. Okay. There's gonna be another one after this if that door is any indication. That was the end. Lovely. Town 5 done. Enter with courage. No. No. I gotta do better than that for a boss. Oh, it's little guy. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't even remember what we were calling that one. The Bilby? Ooh. Got a dark teal version of the Grasshopper. Maybe this can be the Locust. Maybe it doesn't seem too different. <laughs> the bigger they are. The funnier it is when they fall over. Oh. No! <laughs> okay, it's a powerful one. At least we haven't had any recurrence of the, the knife throwing. Oh, oh no, that wasn't the boss. I forgot. The music. Oh no! <laughs> it's the whole video game screen shaking effect. Cudgel on DKC2. Okay, it's not too bad. I can actually avoid the screen shaking effect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if I'm kicking while it lands. Which is interesting. Okay, okay, I get it. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, that was fun. Wow, Mon monsters like Kyonchis are nothing when you fight them. I hope I can be like you someday. Well, I don't know if that's ever an arc in the movies, but... I do know that sequels don't always have the same characters, but they do sometimes have the same actors playing different or even similar roles. Uh, so the, the master character might not be the same exact master, but he's a similar type of master. Oh, you must be the renowned Kenshi. We feel safe having you here. We know you will bring us back the old prosperous village. Indeed. If your village is anything like the other ones, which it seems like they're all the same. Okay, well that's a very ornate temple. Is in the air. So there's no opportunities to gain scrolls here. So it seems like it's just a temple, a training hall, and three bosses. And then the final thing here. Yeah. Wow. Um, they're just running out of... Well, it's not necessarily that they're just running out of budget or whatever. Setting up a town like this does give you a different like structure and experience of the game design, so there's some validity to it. This actually kind of reminds me of nothing so much as for Xanadu, the Famicom Xanadu game, which was quite different to the original Xanadu, but it's like you find a series of towns. There are overworld sections between, not overworld, but it's all side on the whole time, but um, yeah. 
know, there's like combat zones and then town zones. And there were different things available in each town. That was a cool game. Just this morning I was looking at a map that someone had made, like a, a big, almost like an infographic. It had information on all the different monsters and items and stuff as well. And the periphery of the layout, but it was the whole game world, all the screens laid out. It's really cool to see. In that game you're climbing up the outside of a giant magic tree and all these towns are built in its branches. It was pretty cool. A little bit extra let's see. Whoops. Hmm. No, my frames, come back. Oh, it's a young green bilby. Oh, rude. Okay, that went badly. Oh, the poise on this gentleman. Got super armor through my attacks. Yeah. Got a duck more. The best defense against the hopping, obviously. It's almost like this is a real game. You can play this like a real game. It's just a little bit jank, that's all. Okay. So this town will be done soon. And then we can do some grinding in the next town, get some cool moves. And then... Town 8's apparently really small, pretty much just the boss fight, so... We can beat the game. I didn't know if I could do it today, but I've decided that I'm going to do it. If I played the whole game like I was playing the first town, uh, it would take a lot, lot longer, but... Having this zoomy section in the middle. It's made me some good progress quickly. Especially since they give you the powerful kick pretty early. You only need to farm up to get that and then you're pretty much set. Wow. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that was almost really good. Really smooth. That's alright. Still no boss. Okay. No. Or does the music only change at the town boss? Oh. Yeah, I was being callous. Let's do this properly. Oh! It caught up. Oi! I was crouching. That should be proof against any form of attack. Okay. Yeah. Oh! Okay. No! <laughs> hmm. Hitboxes are so jank. But you know, once you get used to them, Stockholm Syndrome. Ah! Oh. Actually, we're talking about Australian and New Zealand settings before. I wanted to tell you, Captain, about this game. Um, oh yeah, Gibbon says, the way the vamp sort of unfolds itself back upright. Yeah, it's creepy, huh? 
Oh, do you mean it's just... it looks silly. <laughs> um, and so with courage... So I just played this game recently called Trigger Witch, which is like a top-down Zelda game crossed with a twin-stick shooter. And it was pretty cool. Although, having finished it, I prefer the dev's previous game, which is called Reverie, um, which is a top-down Zelda-like, more traditional style. Mm. It's got more involved puzzles, from what I remember. But yeah, like, it's a small team based in New Zealand, and the game is set there too. So there's a lot of fun Kiwi-isms about it. And since Captain is a fan of Zelda games and from New Zealand, I thought you might appreciate it if you tried it out. Like, it's still pretty fantastical, but it's also got a lot of down-to-earth charm to it. Like one of the dungeons is a giant sandcastle on the beach. For example. Whoa! Okay. The vampires are all about good posture, says Captain. But also says that Reverie sounds cool. Yeah, the developer is Rainbite Games. And their game is called Reverie. Um, you might want to check out the version that you're getting. Because, like, the original release on the Vita was a bit more basic. They they did like a, a updated re-release with more stuff, more features and content called, I think it was called Reverie Sweet As Edition, I believe. But yeah, just check that before you invest in it. I really wanted to play it on the Vita and then they came out with this new version that had more stuff. So I was like, oh. My Vita doesn't get to have more use. <laughs> Gotta go back to the last few things on my backlog on the Vita. Alright, Town 6 is done. Um, your fighting thrills me, even though I've seen it many times. Dance like a butterfly and sting like a bee. That's not... Mm, okay. I am exhausted just watching you fight. The fighting is fun to watch. That's a good reason to watch Mr. Vampire. Very fun film, again. All right, Town 7. Kenshi, we are so glad you have come this long way to our village. Kenshi, you are our last hope. Please, try your best. All right. Many buildings provide you with 28 scrolls, but two of them will give you 35. Is what it says. That's not all... Uh, <laughs> like, I would hope that I got more information than that, but okay. Danger's in the air. So I want the normal Kyonchi zone. Get some scrolls. Get some training, and then take on the danger zones in this town. Oop. The graphical style of Reverie kind of reminds me of Mother 3, so I just described it as like Mother 3 meets Zelda. Which is a high compliment. But some of the atmosphere reminded me of that too. Ah. Oops. We have 14 now. Oh, more fights. More fights required. Oh, rude. Oh, we do need the temple here since we're... Mm, we're not going straight for the orb. This is, might be a problem. 
Maybe I'll take that one, do a continue, and then go to the temple first. What a weak and miserable boss. Blah, 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 blah. Go! Alright, temple first. Oh, I lost some scrolls, I think. Yeah, I lost half my scrolls. And my items! This will not stand. Temple me. Not that I was using the items anyway, but it's the principle of the thing. Taking half my currency away when I die. What is this, Sekiro or something? Could have used some unseen aid there, that's for sure. my running gag for this stream is just to reference Sekiro. But the losing half your stuff when you die, that really annoyed me about that game. <laughs> Very punishing. Okay, are we done? No. Gloss. The later you are in the game, the more fights you have in a row. Of course. No! Although now that I've played Sekiro, I've been enjoying watching, like, challenge run-through videos. People who are really good at the game and then give themselves arbitrary restrictions. Okay. That's the health. Now, I don't know which ones are the more lucrative spots. There's so many spots. Yeesh. Alright, final spot. Let's just pick this one. Should have checked it if this was a danger zone. Oh well, we'll find out. I don't know if there was a better kick that you got. There's the mid-air kick. be a lot cooler if it had more of the events like the assistant abduction and the ghost and all that stuff. Since town, what was that, two or three? It's been very similar all the way through. Am I really allowed to say that though if I've skipped <laughs> most of the optional stuff in the game up till now? I don't know. From what I can tell, that kind of unique content dries up a bit as you progress. How many? How many? Oh my gosh. They want me to grind on zones like this, maybe? Doing so many fights in a row, that's just tiring. I better spend my scrolls wisely, I might not use them all. Or rather, I might not bother getting all the moves. I think moving faster would be nice. Oh, that was actually a danger zone. Never mind. Can't cheese it here. Normal zone. Bop. No! Jeez Louise. No. 
Oh. There's a funny scene near the start of this movie that I think they could have incorporated into gameplay. Where the master and the apprentice are going to a western style tea engagement or coffee engagement with a client. Um, but they're unfamiliar with western customs that have been uh, introduced. So they don't know the proper way to drink coffee or tea or whatever. In the western style. So the, the female lead character that I mentioned, who's the daughter of the client, like, tricks them into consuming their tea in a very silly way. And they're like, oh, this must be the custom, so they do it as well. It's highly amusing, and I think a tea party minigame would have made this game all the richer. So many fights! Again, this is the this is what would be expected if I was doing grinding here for all the scrolls. Oh my gosh. Brutalized. Sadly I don't think there is a an upgrade on the on the kick. We're at peak kick here. And kick is strictly superior to punch, I believe. From my experience so far. Please tell me that's all. No. <laughs> what is this game? You know there's only one juncture in the in the movie, right? Apart from all the ones in the first scene. There's not like a million billion of them. Maybe this represents all the countless sequels and TV shows that spun off from this film. And the hordes of Jiangsha that came along with them. At last the final battle is approaching. Tighten up your black belf. Belf. Your black belf. Get set for battle. Or as I call it, baffle. Hey, 35 scrolls. Well, I don't know if I want to do that grind every time, but we'll go see what we can buy with those scrolls. But first, quick stop for a rest. Okay, now. Belf. In the Belfry. Oop, quiz time. I forgot about this. You can't see the master for free. To be a phantom fighter, you must know all about the martial arts. What is a Chinese martial art usually called? Kung Fu, martial art, or phantom kick? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'll tell you some of the other quiz questions maybe later. I've got a list of them here on Strategy Wiki. There's not that many. It's not Mega Man Legends or anything. Nor is it... What's the Taiwanese PC Mega Man Legends game? That had a whole ton of quiz in it. Okay. Whoops, wrong button. Yes, teach me. Okay. So jump kick you can just get. But other ones have prerequisites. So we do want to move faster. Sorry, I fast forwarded through the the fun off-screen sound effects. But we can grab some more cheap ones. Real easy now that we have so many scrolls. Mirage move, that will let us crouch better. <laughs> Is the quiz something taken from the movie in any way, says Captain. No, definitely not. Just something they added for gameplay, I guess. Triple Thrust will improve my basic punch. Okay. 
There's... Hmm. There is the teacher-student dynamic with this guy and his two apprentices, but he doesn't really quiz them. Wind jump. That will let me jump higher. Okay, what else? The crawl, I think, would be helpful. Which is... We have wind kick available now. What did that one do? I'll have to look that up. The way strategy wiki's laid out, it's a little hard to go looking for it, but... Uh, um, Mirage Walk is definitely what we want. Come on, load! Not well, the page isn't loading, so never mind. Um, what else is available? Four thrust, jump kick, wind kick, dragon move, mirage th. <laughs> mirage th. <laughs> Sounds intriguing. Um, Strategy Wiki did say that one of these was kind of less useful than it seems. Not sure which one it was though. But regardless, I can't afford anything right now, so. Why don't we go for the next danger zone with our current skill set and see how we go? Right. Normal zone, normal zone, normal zone, danger zone. So let's check out the triple punch. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, my kick is unchanged. I can jump really super high now. I can also run faster. Yeah. And I can crouch better. And move while crouching. Hold on. Yeah, I like that. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Let's test our triple punch. Box him down. Okay. No. Oh man, I wasn't ready. Okay. Trying to look up jump kick. Oh yeah, the jump kick is the one where you get hurt if you miss. It might help because you you kick while running. So it could be good as an approach type thing. Doesn't say how much damage it does. A deadly kick. Could be useful. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Nope. Yeah, and they can hit you while you crashed anyway. What? Ugh. Wow, that went really poorly. Okay, time to fall back on tried and true methods, I think. Which is just to keep proper spacing and use the basic kick. Crouch punch might be useful. Because you'd be safe for a little bit while crouching, and then if you punch, you might even have a chance of knocking them over. So which one was that? I'm not sure. I gotta like scroll through all the different towns to find out what their dojos teach you. is, yeah, getting harder, I think. <laughs> no! Okay. You know, ironically, walking faster might be screwing me up. 
Whoa, you can crawl really fast. Was that a bug? I don't know how I did that. Oh god. You saw that, right? I crawled fast. Okay. Just have to no hit the boss. Hopefully we're at the boss. The mini boss. Okay, these guys are easy. Punch. The range is so short. the crouch punch. <laughs> uh, got the mirage walk. Now it's loading properly. Mirage thrust. Oh, that's mirage. <laughs> and the wind kick is a spinning kick in the air. Jump straight up. Press A. Not easy to hit ground enemies, but best with airborne opponents. I don't know. Wait, what? Boss, what happened? just asking me because I'm... Wait. I thought that was just like an idle message, but I actually lost health. I don't know why. Okay. Alright, so... How much was the Marge lost? Let's do another spot of grinding. I'll just go in here. Whether it's 20 or 35, it's... Well, it might be relevant, who knows. <sighs> no. <sighs> no. You can't walk through that. Chinese philosopher said he who worships monkeys can do no evil. Cease your evil actions. What? Is that real? Alright. It's a punishment to have to walk through all those rooms to rest. Let's see what I can get with 35. The room to get 28 didn't seem that much easier than the one for 35, so might as well go for 35. What is Kyonshi's most powerful weapon? Sharp claws, sharp eyes, or swift moves? Well... You can't hit anyone with the claws unless you have swift moves, right? But it's gotta be the claws. That's the main hitbox on the enemies. <laughs> Gibbons interpreting the worship of monkeys as that everyone should be a Donkey Kong fan. I don't disagree. <clears throat> okay. So the jump kick seems funny, but we'll take a lot of grinding. Wind kick, not that useful. Hits enemies in the air. Four thrusts, yeah, could be good, maybe. 
Dragon move? I already move fast enough. Mirage? <laughs> it costs too much. Um, that's the only one that I think might be more useful to get before the end of the game. Still. So, yeah, a small spot of grinding, shall we? We'll get the crouching thrust to help us be a little bit more versatile in our attacks. And then I will get the final dragon orb and take on the boss, and then we can move on to world 8 and the end of the game. Be there soon. No! A trade. No! Uh, maybe I should get the jump kick. It would be so funny, but it would take so much grinding. <laughs> mm. I'm moving too fast, so when I run away I just put way too much distance in. I regret picking up the movement speed. Okay. Here we go. Kenshi, please save me from this agony. What agony? You did me a great favor. The agony was carrying too many scrolls. Yeah, I could see how that would be hard on the back and the shoulders. If you've got a whole ton of scrolls. So, fair enough. Alright, so we're going to get the crouch punch. We're going to heal. And then we're going to get the last orb. But first, one more quiz question. As a phantom fighter, you must be well learned to test your knowledge. Name an FCI video game. <laughs> so I'll remind you that FCI is Fuji Sunkare Communications International, the North American publisher of this game. Um, but we got clued in by an earlier question that they were cross-promoting Ultima. So, um, oh, you know what? I think this is going to be like these are all right. I'm sure that's what it is. Let me just check on Strategy Wiki because I know Hide Lied, and then there's WCW. Yes, indeed. They are all published by FCI in this region, so any answer is correct. Funny. There's a few um, questions here where all three of them are accepted as correct answers. Maybe I'll tell you some of them during our next fight. Alright, so we want to... Get Mirage Thrust. Mirage th <laughs> Okay. That'll do us for now. I'm not going to bother getting the jump kick. Too much grinding. But... <laughs> Yes, I'm at town 7 of 8, ready to confront the final phases of the game. I just did a tiny bit of grinding to get some uh, ancient scrolls to pay for new moves. I'm not going to get all the moves because there's going to be too much grinding involved. 
the kick that I learned in like town two has carried me through most of the game, so I don't really feel the need to get many other extra moves, but I did just learn this. Punching while crouching. Um, so it seems like there's elements in this game taken from sequels to the movie because there was a baby Jiangshi that I could control with a bell and I don't remember any small children in the original Mr. Vampire. So this is a 1989 game. The first film's 1985. I'm not sure of the time frame of the sequels, but that's my uh, assumption. Okay, the child was in Mr. Vampire 2. Can you tell me more about the child? Captain was asking before, like, there's a quiz before you can enter the dojo. There's like quiz questions. And he was saying, oh, is the quiz something from the movie? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have the three dragon orbs, which means we can exit, but I'll make a new save slot. Just in case we want to return here to learn any extra moves before the final boss, if we regret moving on. So the child was a good juncture. It made friends with local kids. Cool. And they went on an adventure. That sounds awesome. I've got to watch the sequel at some point. Alright, with our three orbs of jade, said to be derived from a dragon's tears, I'm able to break the seal on the final zone of the town, in each case, and confront its boss, which usually are unique enemies. We fought the, the ghost lady in town two, and there was a, a unique event where the apprentice got kidnapped and we had to rescue him, and we couldn't use items while that was the case. So that, I, think, I think that was a really good use of part of the plot of the movie. But for the most part, the rest of the game has just been entering endless buildings and just fighting hordes of Jiangshi. So the, in the, like, that part of the game is very not faithful to the movie, unfortunately. But that's okay. And like the fact that Master Cow needs to learn new techniques is laughable because he's like already a, the ultra master at the beginning of the film. Okay, that's, I'm seeing the child juncture on a seesaw with a small local child. So I did briefly get to play as the baby, the baby vampire through the use of a magic bell. Ah, oh, nuts. <laughs> nope, that slot poorly placed. Okay, uh, we'll make another save save here. Half health is pretty good. No! But yeah, there's a few different varieties. Mostly they have different heights and different, like, health. Ah! Different power. There was one that threw daggers, which was the most deadly because they did huge damage and would actually hit you from a distance unlike every other enemy in the game pretty much the, the lady the ghost lady did throw her disembodied head though i couldn't remember if that happened in the film but yeah it's all just punches and kicks there's no chicken blood involved uh which was a thing in the movie no rice no sacred ink strings or anything so yeah Oh, we do have our tools, that's right, I forgot the tools, because I basically haven't used them for most of the game. The talisman you can put on a Jiangshia, it replaces your punch attack, and it will immobilize them for a while, which is something that happens in the movie, for sure. The mirror, or Ton Ten, um, is sort of like a... Oh my god, this is horrendous. The mirror is like a screen clearing attack, although there's only other, ever one enemy at a time, so it just knocks down the enemy from a distance, basically. And the sword gives you a little bit more reach on your punch attacks, but also if you get hurt while you're using it, it breaks. It's basically the giant's knife, because it broke for me after using it three times. Um, bloody hell, mate! And there was a fourth item, wasn't there? Yeah, the bell. That was only contextual for that one town. 
to control the baby. Okay, so apparently some of these things that I've described are from later installments, the third or fourth movies. So that's good to know. They had a big sword that broke easily <laughs> in the third or fourth movie, apparently. That's funny. It is fun that they're taking elements of the sequels to make it... Whoa! <laughs> to make it into a... like, almost a crossover. Whoa! I can do a Samus flip now! <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> it's like the spin jump in... Oops. In Sonic Bowl. Oh, is this the new technique? <laughs> Get him in a corner and crouch punch? Fireball hurt, but it's nothing to my crouch punch technique. The groin punch. It doesn't do as much damage as a kick. Oh wait, they're out of bounds? <laughs> oh, they're coming back. <laughs> okay. Oops. Well, why mess with success? Some of the boss creatures might have been from later installments too. There was one that had like a big beard around its face and an axe, I don't know. Most of the enemies are just variations on the basic juncture design. Okay, we did it. Copy this password. We have been waiting for you, Kenshi. A witch named Obo, who settled in this village, is manipulating gangs of Kyonchis. If we can defeat the witch, we can return peace to our village. I like how they put the E in the plural of Kyonchi, which is the Japanese term for Jiangshu. Okay, so this is going to be a small zone. Two danger areas. Oh, they do have a dojo here. Maybe. It looks like a dojo, but it says danger. And the big bridge. Remove the seal, enter. Okay. So how many was that? One, two, three. Wow, not even a temple. It's forcing us into the boss rush. There is a witch in the third movie, but they are probably just mistranslating magician. Yeah, so is this the concept that... There's like a wizard who can control the juncture. This was in um, Close Encounter, no, Encounters of the Spooky Kind. But it didn't happen so much in Mr. Vampire itself. Apart from the other friendly guy who was controlling a crowd of juncture. Because that was the original sort of folklore, was that it would be controlled by some evil person from afar. Um, but it feels like in Mr. Vampire they sort of incorporated more like Western ideas of undead creatures, zombies, and vampires, where it was a curse and they could spread the curse by attacking humans. I'm not sure if that's in the original folklore. But I don't think it's in Encounters of the Spooky Kind. In the fourth movie, the Jiangshu controller guy made them do the limbo. Well, that sounds pretty funny. Whoops. Oh boy. Forgot to save state, so I'll just rewind back to here. Make that state, and we'll start again. The enemies sure are getting harder as we proceed, but nothing I can't handle, hopefully. Yeah, take that. Yes, that's right. Mid-combat saves coming. I'm doing it. I have no shame. Yeah. The limbo scene is the only good part of the fourth movie. Hmm. Yeah. Seems like they definitely get more goofy over time, the movies. Not that the first one isn't full of comedy. 
but if you compare the tone of Mr. Vampire to Encounters of the Spooky Kind, it's quite quite a difference. A bit more suspense in the original Samo Hung film. Although I'll remind you, Samo Hung like directed and I think starred in Encounters, but then produced Mr. Vampire, so he was still involved. People even thought that he'd actually directed Mr. Vampire and just got Ricky Lau as a like an apprentice or something. But no. Ricky Lau definitely directed Mr. Vampire. And according to accounts I've read, Sammo Hung was pretty hands-off. He wanted he didn't want to be too overbearing a producer on the project. He let them go about it without undue influence. Third one is the best. Okay, so there's lots of interesting politics to the Mr. Vampire films. That's interesting. I would like to hear more about that. Oops. No! <laughs> There's a bit of, like, class commentary in it, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So Ricky Lau and Sammo Hung meeting with other directors of Hong Kong to help determine what a distinctly Hong Kong film was as distinct from a China film or a British film. And these films were part of that conversation. That's really interesting. I think the martial arts comedy factor is very much part of its identity, and I, like, from my limited experience of um, regional film criticism, that seems like a distinctly Hong Kong flavor to it to me. Ooh, they also met with Bruce Lee as part of that. Now that is a name we haven't mentioned yet, but definitely a big part of the Hong Kong cinema conversation. Okay, so that's part of the reason that later sequels in the series are so focused on Hong Kong specific problems. For example, Vampire, Mr. Vampire 3 is half about Hong Kong's unique place in history slash culture and half about Ricky Lau wanting to be friends with a ghost. <laughs> I didn't know Ricky Lau was acting in them as well. Is he in the first Mr. Vampire as well? Um, okay. Oop. See, sometimes you knock them down, sometimes you don't. I don't know if there's a way to predict that. Oh, he's not in them, but I guess he's involved in creating them and inserting those themes. Wanting to be friends with a ghost is all part of the first one as well, although they're a little more than friends. Mr. Vampire 3 has two ghosts, a kid and his older brother. That are very friendly and just bros. Well, that sounds nice. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Um, the whole subplot in Mr. Vampire with the evil ghost seductress um, could be seen as a little misogynist, but it's definitely not as misogynist as Encounters of the Spooky Kind, <laughs> which ends with Samo Hung like drop kicking his girlfriend. Because she is a like um, an unfaithful partner and very self-serving. So yes, be warned about that.
There's definitely some misogyny in Mr. Vampire, but it could be worse. <laughs> hmm. Like the three male characters competing for the affections of the one female character. Films do get better on sexism as, as they go on, apparently. That's good to know. Oh! Ugh. This one's gonna be hard to crouch under since it's already short. Um. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you get this really fast crouch shuffle, I don't know why. We should try more of the Mirage Thrust technique. See, this one's really confused when I'm crouched, apparently. Hey, there we go. Oh, that was the end. That spin jump is so funny. So cool. Okay. Last one. And then we'll have the three dragon orbs needed for the final confrontation with the boss. Let's go. Boom. Crouch punch, crouch punch, crouch punch. Wow, they really don't know what to do when you're crouching. Oops. Get down, get down, you fool! Alright, that didn't work out so well this time. <laughs> no! No! Oh, what happened? What happened to my execution? Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe it can't see me when I'm crouching sometimes. Because they were just sort of turning back and forward in confusion. Um, there are some tense scenes in both Encounters and in Mr. Vampire, where they're hiding from it. Um, this is one of the bits of lore that were invented for these movies. Is if you're holding your breath, the vampire cannot sense you. And it can't really see, but it can detect people from their heartbeats and their and their breathing, apparently. Um, maybe a heightened sense of hearing. So if you're holding your breath, you're basically invisible to it. And then they're like hiding in a cupboard and like sneaking around while it's looking for them. My cat wants to come in, I'll be right back. What about the spooky kind sequels? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe, um, oh, what's his name? The actor playing Master Cow uh, reprises his role in uh, Spooky Kind 2, Lam Ching Ying. But he reprises that role or something like it in lots and lots and lots of movies and TV shows. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Save there. We're almost done. Oops. I like that they kind of incorporated that stealth mechanic. Meh. Yeah. Anything that's just taken from the movie or movies is fun. It's good addition. Incorporating that into gameplay can be a challenge sometimes, but oh, this one's unique. The ponytail but a green palette. This might be the 
final mini boss here? No! Okay. They really throw you through the gauntlets in these later stages. Oops. I'm trying to be more aggressive, but. Well, it's dangerous though. Oops. This has got to be the last one here, surely. Orb? Yeah. What's up, Midman? Just sniffing the wall. Alright, three dragon orbs, get ready for the final boss. Use all my tools against it when we get there. Hmm. I might regret losing that health. Looks like they're gonna send out some of the big guns on the way. Oh! Oh! Get some cheap shots in, yeah. Alright. I don't know. I don't like all this health I'm losing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm considering this a scouting run, basically. See how many fights we have before the final boss. Ugh. Could save Scum Throw and do them perfectly. <laughs> Come on. Alright, they're just going to throw everything at us. We're going to do the save scum solution. <laughs> and when I get to the final boss, I'll use my tools. I could use them to maybe get through some of these things easier. Mm. Why don't we try it? Oops. Use items. Talisman. So if I saved the bell until now, I probably could have brought Conchi in for this final gauntlet, but oh well. There we go. And now I can't move for a bit. I can get some hits in. You know what? I don't think it's that useful. Because <laughs> if you're using an action in gameplay to attach the talisman, you might as well use that action to just attack and do some damage anyway. <laughs> like, what does it really gain you? Because they just back up again afterwards. I guess you can get behind them. No. See, while that's going up... Yeah, well, they just turn around anyway. But... Boom. Get behind. It's just like, it has the range of a punch, which means it's really short anyway, and as risky as a punch because of the short range. Well, have still got it. The mirror breaks after one use. Let's grab the sword. So Volklos told me that the sword only breaks if you get hit while you're using it. It's not that it breaks after a certain number of uses, so we can test that. He was wrong. <laughs> Three hits, bugger all damage, and it broke. <laughs> it's useless. It's a trick. It's bait. Um, so we'll carry nothing. The whole item system, totally underwhelming. Pathetic. Oops. Get 
the cheap shots in, kick it when it turns around. Why do we need all those other moves? We don't need them. Oh, I shouldn't have saved. Oh well, it's fine. We're playing perfectly, so it's not a problem. Oh. You can't turn around while crouching, apparently. <laughs> it's so funny that I just can't see you. Wow. Really learned some good cheese strats. Okay, does it work against short guy? Well, we did it before against short guy. Oh, but the short guy's hitbox, hurtbox, can still get you. So it's been more risky. No, I gotta play more perfectly than that, I guess. I don't know how I took that hit before, but that's fine. Just be really careful about your positioning, which is why picking up the faster moving upgrade can be as much of a detriment as it helps you. Hard, by the way. Do you know that? Oh, that kind of works. Punch is just so weak, though. Right. Is this the final boss? The music changed. It's shooting fireballs. Let's grab that mirror. Ah. So this is the witch, or ball. Okay, where are you? Ah! Mirror! Nope, oh. mirror! Yeah, it's not that useful. <laughs> It's playing the mirror sound effect when I crouch jump, but it doesn't have the mirror effect. Wow, um, the mirror sucks. And it's not single use. The mirror is actually the one that breaks when you get hit. Which is what Volkos said about the sword, so I guess he was just off by one error. Ugh. Really? Interesting character design. Although having only like two shades per character is a bit of a bit of a handicap. Nope. No, I could crash that. Yeah, like that. Oh, can I bully the witch? Ah, oh, she teleports. She knows how to get out of the bully trap. Get him. Yeah, she's not so tough. Nope. Oh, the range. Kaboom! She explode. I win. Kenchi's long fight is now over. Evil has disappeared. Is this the apprentice talking? <laughs> Uh, and peaceful nights have been returned to the people, and Kenchi left, by himself, for a faraway land with sandstorms raging. What? Okay. Sure. Do you think this is a unique event set between movies, maybe? It's incorporating things from multiple movies. Oh, look at that. Beauty. 
Weird ending, says Gibbon. Yep. That's fair. Wonder if that's the lead into a film. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I haven't seen all the sequels, so maybe that's how another f one of the films ends and they're like referencing that, or maybe that's what happens in another one of the films. <sighs> yeah, I forgot to tell you about some of the other quiz questions. So while the credits are playing, I'll do you a quick quiz. How many stars are there in the American flag? 50, 28, or 5? Hmm. What country do samurais come from? We got that one. India, Japan, or Spain? What is the best method to make sure Kyonshi's never revive again? Big stakes. That's S-T-A-K-E-S. Seal in rock or fry in oil? I don't think any of these were covered in the movie that I saw, so maybe it was in a sequel, but fry in oil is apparently the correct answer there. What is the teaching taught by Confucius called? Psychiatry, Confucianism, or Physiognomy? Now we learnt that was Confucianism, of course. Who built the Great Wall of China? The Emperor, Plasterer, or Farmer? And all three are correct. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, the frying and oil does come up in later movies. Good to know. What is Kyonshi's most powerful weapon? Sharp claws, sharp eyes, or swift moves? It's sharp claws. And there's FCI, the publisher in North America. It's a classic NES ending screen where you just have to reset your console. So I'll just reset it myself. We can watch the demo screen a bit while I read you these last few quiz questions. <clears throat> what is the horrible skill called when your head is banged against your opponent's head? Head strike, head batting, or head to head? And all three are correct. Head batting must be a mis... Uh, rendering of head butting. I'm sure. That's weird. What's the name of George Bush's dog? Millie, Martha, or Pooch? It's Millie. Who created Ultima? Lord British, Prince Chuck, or Mr. Exodus? It is, in, in, of course, Lord British. We got that one right. What is the best thing to use to capture Kion Shi's? Coffin, urn, or jewelry box? The correct answer is urn. They're, they're stored in these sort of hollowed out tree logs that they use as coffins. Um, but the urn reminds me of Dragon Ball's Mafuba technique, <clears throat> where they stored evil things inside jars with magic seals, much like the ones used in the uh, form of talismans in this game. So the only thing is a plot point in multiple films. Cool. Interesting. I don't remember it in the first, but it might have been there. A lot a lot happened in the, in the movie. <laughs> what is the famous Chinese newspaper? School paper, wall poster, or daily China? I didn't understand this at all, but it's apparently wall poster. What is the feet what is the food Kion Shi's hate? Liver, ice cream, or frog eyes? The correct answer is for some reason, ice cream. There's probably some humor derived out of that with the child one in one of the sequels, I would guess. But it's interesting that the game kind of expects you to have knowledge of multiple films in this series. Uh, especially interesting for North American audiences. I don't know how well localized the films were. How well distributed they were. Something is used to beat Kyonshi's. What is it? Bird's blood, lizard scale, or vulture nail. They do use a chicken's blood in the first movie, so it's bird's blood for that one. Why do Kyonchis only come out at night? Play late, shy, or hate the sun? And the correct answer is hate the sun. Which emperor is often called the last emperor? Sagi, Higi, or Fugi? And it is apparently Fugi, although I don't know enough Chinese history 
to confirm that myself. What kind of place do Kyo Kyonshis usually live in? We got this question and it was Wet Place, New Jersey, and Beverly Hill. According to Strategy Wiki, all three are considered acceptable correct answers. So when we were talking about, you know, New Jersey and Beverly Hill earlier, that would have actually worked. Um, we've got the next few of them already. What is the skill called where you hold your opponent's arms from the back and throw him backward? It's Dragon Suplex, not Front Suplex or Side Suplex. Name an FCI video game, Hydlaid, WCW, and Ultima. There's links helpfully provided on Strategy Wiki to other pages covering those games. What is a Chinese martial art usually called? It's Kung Fu, it's not martial art or phantom kick. And the final question that was in the pool, what is another word for one? Uno, Ichi, or Un? And all three are, of course, correct, because they are one in different languages. Whoa. There we go. My Rollus Quizmeister is fulfilled. I am the Grand Inquisitor. So I hope you enjoyed that. This has been Phantom Fighter, aka Regen Doshi. Named after the Japanese name for the film, Mr. Vampire. Um, I guess one last thing is I'll show you the full box art of the different regions. Doo, doo, doo. So, Japanese Famicom box art. Looking good. And... North American NES box art. Also pretty cool, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not going to take over from Max. There's so much that he does to go into that quiz. Everybody watch Max Brimstone's gaming quiz. Saturday nights, Australian time, on Twitch. Okay, that's all. Yes, now I've played the greatest game ever made. Um, the next quiz question is, what will I do next? Well, I talked about, um, well, in a previous stream, we discussed Flintstones games and how surely there's one where you play as a cave woman. Well, I did the research, I've done it, and I know I have a positive answer, and you can find out next week when I play the game or games that fulfill that brief. <laughs> Gibbon says, this is an interesting game. I will likely never play it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit jank, but <laughs> I had fun with it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching too. Look forward to some Flintstones action next week as we finish the last dregs of relevance to the BC Kids series that I wrapped up on. And then after that, who knows? I'll have to think of something. But until then, have a good one. And don't get spooked. That's okay, spooky season's over. Now we all have to start getting ready for Christmas, apparently. At least that's what the supermarket wants me wants to tell me. Alright, catch you later, everyone. Bye.